This is not me, y'all. I'm fighting for my life. Y'all killing me with this I gave y'all 30 years of my for centuries, we've been captivated by the ability to detect deception. Whether you're conducting workplace investigations and human resources, grappling with a dishonest employee as a business owner, working in law enforcement, or simply trying to ascertain if you're being lied to, I'm going to show you three of the most common verbal indicators that most liars demonstrate. And I promise you, you won't want to miss any of these, so stay with me to the end. One of the most common indicators I've seen during my investigations is qualifiers and convincers. Basically, a qualifier is a word or a phrase that is used to convince the interviewer that the liar is a good person. They are used to qualify one's character. For instance, if I were to ask a sexual battery suspect if he committed sexual battery, he may explain how he could never do something like that and that all of his friends would vouch for him. Saying things like, ask my friends, Anyone who knows me knows I would never do anything like this. He may explain how he loves his wife, he always talks about her, and he could never do something like that to her. In this next video, I'm going to show you an example of what a qualifier sounds like. This is the interrogation of an attempted murder suspect who shot several rounds into a vehicle occupied by a 10-year-old girl and her family. Pay attention as you'll hear how the suspect, who later confessed, qualifies why he could never shoot a gun. All right, let me ask you this. What did the guys say to you when they picked you up today? I mean, you're a little curious as to why a bunch of guys jumped out and yeah, snatched you? Just talking about three counts of attempted murder. What does that What does that say to you? What does that make you think? Uh, I hate guns. Okay. Think it's a pretty serious situation? Yeah, so why would I, why would so I even like guns? So this, gets, I... this gets back to where to John was talking about earlier. Where... Quite often, liars will be unable to answer a simple yes or no question. It's because they don't necessarily want to commit to yes or no. They're looking for a safety net. In fact, during one of my interviews with a carjacking suspect, I asked him straight up if he took the victim's car. Instead of simply saying no, he replied, I don't have a license, I'm not allowed to drive. That's a classic diversion from yes or no. Take a listen to this next interrogation of a robbery suspect being asked several yes or no questions. You'll be amazed at how he completely avoids using those two little words, yes or no. He's obviously dancing around the truth. What, what started that whole thing? Right, man, that man, that crazy. That man called police and I took something from him. He that man crazy, man. That wasn't even, a, I'm thinking you talking about something for real. Okay. That man, that, that dude right now. Well, on, well, well, tell me about it. Did Did you, I got something for you. Okay. Did you take anything from him? He don't got nothing. Okay. That man don't. Man. Well, let me tell you what he says you took, and this is what I want to talk about. Um, did you take any jewelry from him? So I don't even I got one watch that's a phone okay. watch. Did you have, okay, so that day at all, you again, my bear, bear with me. All right. So did you have at any time in your possession uh, a necklace that belonged to him that day? My man ain't have no, I don't even know if he had that or not. Another common verbal trait of liars is when they provide insignificant details as they lay out their side of the story. For example, when honest people give their side of the story, they normally lay out the facts of the case or the scenario in a linear fashion and they tend to stick with the facts. Sometimes liars will include details that have nothing to do with the situation or event. In this next clip, you'll hear a carjacking suspect go over their timeline of events while denying involvement in the carjacking. Notice how he includes irrelevant details in an attempt to appear he's being helpful. But in reality, he's misleading me by talking about insignificant, minute details that have nothing to do with the case or the conversation. To the untrained ear, it may sound like he's being helpful, when in reality, he's actually being deceptive. We all know why we're here. So the night we're referring to is the night that that lady's car got stolen. You know which night I'm referring to, correct? It's Tuesday night. I want to make sure we're talking about Tuesday night, that you're giving me a timeline for Tuesday night. Tuesday, yes. Okay, go ahead. Um, so then you go, you get to black, you go back, do you walk back to Mama's house or you drop? I walk back to Mama's house. Okay. Was she home? She was home. And then my sister, she was texting me, telling me that she's going to be home soon, so make sure the door is unlocked. Okay. What'd you do after that? After I did that, I had to tuck my shower. But once I tucked my shower, I came back in the living room. I was on my phone, put my phone on the charger. And then I was chilling after that. Once I tucked my shower, 
my sister came inside the door. She was like, when you did you um, mess with my brownies? I was like, no, I did not mess with your brownies. So then when we got in our little argument about that, you know, our little one too. And that's one moment she was like, y'all need to chill. Y'all don't need to be arguing. So I was like, okay. So I was like, it's well, I'm gonna just drop. So then my mom, she was asking me, did I, uh, why did I spend my own uh, $200? So I was like, I spent my $200 mainly on food and then my tattoo that I got my arm. Remember, detecting deception is never done with 100% accuracy. The best way to ensure that you're not making a mistake and accusing an innocent person of wrongdoing is to couple the deception indicators with corroborating evidence. For instance, if you feel your significant other is lying to you about an affair, Solely relying on these deception indicators could be a mistake. That's because the mere fact that you're questioning them could cause stress, guilty or innocent. And the stress is what we're actually hearing and seeing. People often confuse the two. Before you confront anyone with your suspicions, do your homework, gather evidence, and then observe their behavior. Have you ever had a hunch that someone wasn't telling you the whole truth? Drop a comment below and share your experiences with us. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you have never held anybody against their will. I don't need to. That, Why would I? Well, I'm, I'm, How stupid would you never held for R. Kelly with all I've been through in my way, way past to hold somebody, let alone four, five, six, fifty, you said, what? How stupid would I be to do that? I didn't say you That's were holding. That's stupid, guys. I didn't. Is this camera on me? Yes, it's on. That's stupid. Use your common sense.